Hey, well, I have a book for you. This book is a tank, but it is a good, good biography. Maybe the best I've ever read. I loved this book. This is The First Tycoon, The Epic Life of Cornelius Vanderbilt by T.J. Stiles. Cornelius Vanderbilt, he built this country. People don't realize it. I didn't realize it. He, first of all, book is long. I'll tell you what, it's a great read if you're a nonfiction biography history lover. You're going to love this book. It is 600 pages. So, it, and it took me two months. Now, that normally wouldn't be the case. I'd normally read a book a week, but... Uh, it got a little dry in his 20s. It covers everything from birth to death. Unbelievable life he lived. Some of the things that he did. Fist fights, horse racing down the cobblestone streets of New York, falling out of the wagon, breaking every bone, going to the hospital. Wall Street Wars, the biggest merger in corporate history. I'll hit you the highlights. So it goes, his parents come over from the Netherlands. They come over, he's born. He starts in his 20s as a captain doing steamboats. Eventually, he designs one of the most innovative Navy ships anybody's ever seen. Uh, graduates from steamboats into steamships, starts to build a you know, million dollar fortune. And then he, at 70, really changed everything. He entered the railroad market and merged, I think it was. New York Central and something Harlem Railroads, and it connected, it's the first railway, railway to connect Man Manhattan and the eastern seaports to, like, Buffalo, New York, and then eventually Chicago and further west. And he made a fortune of what today would be three and a half billion dollars, but the, but the kicker was his influence over the government of the United States, because the GDP of the entire country was a fraction of what it is today. So three and a half billion ended up being, like, one of every $29 in circulation, you know, that existed. Like, if he liquidated his fortune of $100 million at the time, $3.5 billion today, he would basically have pulled all of the cash that was circulating, the green cash, from the United States. So he would have it all. Like, it was the only, that was the amount that existed. So you can imagine how, like Elon Musk, he's a, he's a fraction of our government's GDP, but you give him 5 or 6 or 7% of the entire country's economy or something that might even be higher than that, I can't quite remember the number. The power and influence you'll have over the government is astounding. So yeah, he was, he was in 200 and whatever years this country's been here, probably the most influential business person in terms of power the country's ever seen. And that stands today. Probably will ever see because it just happened to be timing. Uh, he amassed such a fortune so quickly at a time that the GDP wasn't huge for it to be that way. I don't think it would ever happen again. So fascinating story and it, when it comes to the government's power and then corporate power. And also the shifting. He lived through the Civil War. He lived through oil. He lived through the gold rush. He lived through the Panama Canal. He fought a war. He paid military to go down and basically overthrow American crazies that were trying to take over the government in Nicaragua and did successfully. He went down there and raided their ships and overthrew the Nicaraguan government. I mean, what a freaking life he lived, huh? So, uh... Great book. I mean, it covers everything. It goes from his 20s, where he starts to build his fort. Also, T.J. Styles does a great job in forming narratives so that it keeps your interest. So every page, you're wanting to turn to the next because you're being told a story. It's just not a bunch of detail. It is. It's, a, it's incredibly detailed about his life, but it's not boring, and it's not written in a way that's just like you're reading a statistics sheet. He forms it into storytelling so that it really keeps your interest. So anyway... The overall great book, uh, one of the best biographies I've ever read. It did win a National Book Award and uh, well-deserved. If you go to YouTube, there is a library answer and, you know, question and answer that TJ Styles does with an audience for about an hour. You'll, it's the first video if you search the title of this book. And he talks about and, and actually adds to some of this book, and it's great. If, if you've just read it, go look that up and enjoy his talk because it really kind of just gives a nice finishing touch to this book but it was great three or four bucks on ebay pick it up it's also in the the store at the biltmore the biltmore estate in nashville north carolina is the the biggest mansion in america ever built by his grandson 
and I think it was two and a half billion dollars in today's money that hit, that his great grandchild spent on that place. They just his kids and his grandkids just blew his fortune, which was a shame because he was so the antithesis to that. He was such a penny pincher and such a uh, just disciplined individual. His kids get it and they just all go and just build mansions and everything else and just waste the fortune away. After all of that incredible life he lived, it just seems such a, like a tragic end, but you know it's going to end that way. No family's fortune has ever lasted, you know, that long. So anyway, great book. Oh, awesome. And uh, makes me want to go buy a, 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 a steamship on the East Coast or something, <laughs> you know? Uh, fascinating. All right. First Tycoon, The Epic Life of Cornelius Vanderbilt by T.J. Styles.